Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here bringing you another Minecraft World War 1 path to build tutorial. In this tutorial we go ahead and building the Palata class cruiser. The Palata class cruisers, often known in Russian as the Diana type protected cruisers, were a group of three protected cruisers built by the Imperial Russian Navy in the late 1890s. One ship of the class Aurora is still crewed by the Russian Navy and maintained as a museum ship. The Palata class cruisers were built in the New Admiralty shipyard in St. Petersburg to reinforce the Baltic fleet. However, the cruisers were intended to operate on commerce raiding operations worldwide, especially in the Far East. Initially, the Imperial Russian Navy looked at foreign designs including the Royal Navy's Apollo class and then the Astrea class before deciding to proceed with a domestic design. Although the armor protection of the Palata class was still light, it represented a significant improvement over predecessing um, Russian cruiser designs. Orders for Palata and Diana were placed in December of 1895 and for Aurora in June 1897. However, due to the very long construction period required for these vessels, they were already obsolete upon entry into service. As part of this same construction program, the Russian Navy had received cruisers of similar size from abroad, the, uh, the Varyag, Askold, and the Bogatir which were delivered between January 1901 and August 1902, and which were superior to the Palata class in several aspects, including their maximum speed of 23 knots or 43 kilometers per hour, 26 miles per hour. So yeah, the uh, Palata class, um, basically ships, uh, they all saw service during World War I, uh, with one being uh, lost, one scrapped, and one preserved, the Aurora being the preserved carrier, or cruiser that can still be visited today as a museum ship. So a pretty uh, interesting, uh, you know, little ship here, a fun World War I uh, build. I think this is going to be our, uh, I guess, technically second uh, World War I um, Russian build, and uh, which is kind of wild because that's actually more than a lot of the other countries we have in terms of uh, these types of um, builds. So a uh, pretty fun one and should be a cool build to add to the collection. Very similar in that Bogat here, um, kind of styling with uh, basically just a real kind of, I guess between ironclad and a modern kind of cruiser type design with casemates and all that stuff. So a really interesting uh, time for naval uh, military uh, designs. But anyways, before we go and take a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give special links to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and play a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, earn a few core requests to your choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really greatly appreciated, so definitely feel free to check it out. Again, link will always be in my video descriptions. With that though, let's go and dive in and take a look at it. So, uh, taking a look at it, we have obviously the um, main gun battery located on the front here. We also have secondary batteries located on the sides. Um, I think these are actually all the same caliber, so I don't even know if you would really consider them um, uh, secondary um, guns, but uh, pretty similar in uh, size all the way around. Actually, I think these are these guns are larger. Yeah, these guns are larger, and these ones on the side here are a little bit um, smaller. I think it kind of varies. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. It's kind of a mixed bag there on the side. Uh, we have all the detail here with the conning tower, uh, the details for the extra lifeboats on the side of the vehicle, all the um, you know funnels and all that stuff on top here. And we get to the back, we have more of the detail and stuff like that with the deck. Some few uh, very simple anti-aircraft gun positions. And that right there is pretty much the Aurora. Uh, pretty interesting little ship. It's also done up in the color scheme that is seen in War uh, Thunder. And it might be the actual real ship's color scheme as well. Uh, that's currently a museum, but uh, a couple of tones of basically gray. It kind of uh, starts darker, has a little bit of a lighter shade, and then the lightest shade being that stone color. So, uh, pretty cool build. Should be a fun one, again, to add to your World War One Russian navies. And with that, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so go ahead and move into our first layer. We'll be going ahead and start with layer 1. A few things I want to mention real quick is if you're completely new to my bath to build um, series, the way I like to structure the first few layers here where we're really building the whole of the ship is I like to do half on half off. This will be done for probably about the first uh, I would say maybe two layers and then we'll go ahead and go into building each layer all together. Uh, it basically just helps speed up the tutorial a little bit and it's basically the both sides are exactly symmetrical to each other so it's a little bit easier just to go ahead and do it this way um, and obviously once we get into a little bit more detail there's a little bit more going on and a little bit more explain when we get to that point but um 
let's go ahead and get started. Um, one thing also is if you do want to build this on water, what I say, a lot of you guys are going to want to do, you do want to make sure that you position this correctly. This here um, basically will be placed in the water at this level. So you can see the blue concrete here representing our water level. And you can see that this layer, layer one here, basically is level with that water level. Very important. Uh, make sure that that is correct because if you have it obviously too high or too low, it's going to sit really weird in the water and not look right. So make sure you take the time, make sure that that is positioned correctly, and we can go and get started. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a brick top slab, followed by a brick upstairs down stair. And then behind that stair, we're going to take our red concrete and place down a long row going back. That is going to be 19 red concrete blocks back, a brick wall, a red stained glass pane. We're going to skip a space and then place down a brick wall on the end here. After that's all done, going back up to the front, we're going to place down a red stained glass pane coming off this red concrete block, so the second one here. Two red stained or glass block or panes back from that, so you have a row of th three there. We're going to go ahead and place down three brick walls back, then one, two, three, four, five, six red concrete blocks, two brick walls, and then two red, or sorry, three red stained glass panes, a andesite or a acacia wood fence gate, a iron bar, and then a skeleton skull here. We're also going to place down a skeleton skull coming off this glass pane just like that and uh, at this point if you are on Java we can go ahead and use the slash give at P minecraft colon debug and it should pop up here we can press tab and this right here will be your command slash give space at P space minecraft colon debug stick press the enter will give us the debug stick and again this is going to be only available on Java we can go ahead and then use our debug stick here to actually change the properties um, of our uh, basically, uh, our stained glass pane here to go ahead and kind of form in the direction we want it to. Um, and we can also do the same with the brick wall. We can go ahead and alter this um, as well. So we can have it kind of facing toward this, toward uh, this um, skeleton skull a little bit more. And basically just like that. So uh, just kind of wait to add a little bit more detail, make that look a little more streamlined on the whole. Again, if you're on Java, you have access to a little um, extra bit there. Uh, but other than that, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer number one for the build. Here's an aerial overview of what it should look like. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to begin with, we're going to place down a polished blackstone wall on top of this brick top slab, followed by a row of four of gray concrete blocks back from that wall. We then want to place down a row of oak wood planks. This row in total is going to be a row of 15 oak wood planks down the center, followed by one, two, three, four, five of our gray concrete blocks and then a gray stingless pane there on the very end like so after that's all done we want to go and then go up to the front here we're going to place down a item frame on the side of this uh, block here and then in the item frame we're going to place down a gray concrete block if you are on java we can go ahead and also place a dark oak wood sign on the side of this uh, block as well along with the item frame if you are on bedrock or pocket edition you will not be able to place down a item frame and a sign in the same block space if that's the case just place down the item frame and disregard the sign we're gonna go then place down a row of one and two uh gray stained glass panes then one two three four black or polished black stone uh walls then one two three four five six seven eight gray concrete one two three four polished black stone walls one two three and four uh gray stained glass panes and after we have that all done, just double checking to make sure we're not missing anything. Everything does appear to be good to go. You'll take what we've done on the right side, flip over to the left side, and this right here is what it'll look like from the top down view. With that though, that is going to do it for layer number two. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to layer number three. And going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer three. For layer three, we're going to start off by placing on a cyan terracotta block on top of this gray concrete block here, followed by a light gray stainless paint coming off the front of it. On both sides of this block, we are going to place down a polished black stone button. From this, we're going to place down a second polished or sorry, a, a second cyan terracotta block, and then a oak wood plank. Going to the sides of this first block here, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane to both sides, and then a andesite wall going back from that glass pane. On the side of this glass pane on the left side, we're going to place down an item frame and a crossbow in the item frame rotated facing downwards. On the right side, we're going to place down two item frames with a crossbow in each one, same as we did for the other side, both will be rotated facing downwards like that. After we have that done, we want to go and then place down a oak wall here in the center. After that, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a fence gate, and we're going to place down a fence gate right here, opened up toward that wall. And we then want to place down a stone brick stair to both sides like so, with a end rod coming off the front there of those stairs. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a cyan terracotta block here in the center. And then going to the sides of it, we're going to place down a light gray stainless pane. We then want to place down a stone brick stair, or sorry, actually, rather a cyan terracotta block again in the center. Stone brick stair to both sides here, and then an end rod. 
We're going to then place down a Cyan Terracotta block in the center again. A Light Gray Stainless Peen again to both sides. And a Nair Cyan Terracotta block in the center. And a Nair Stonework Stair to both sides. Like so. And Rod's coming off those stairs. We can go ahead and use our Debug, steer, debug Stick here again to alter the properties of our glass panes. And basically just go ahead and stretch these to the sides. Again, if you're on Pocket Edition or Bedrock, it's not that big of a deal. This is just an extra kind of quality of life improvement to make those glass panes look a little bit nicer. Um, and make it look a little bit more, uh, I guess, fluid on the side of our ship. At this point here, we're going to then take our Cyan Terracotta. And we're going to place down a row of one, two, three blocks back. We're going to take our inside walls and place down one, two, three. And inside walls, one, two, three. And then one more on both sides. Save a row of four going back on both sides there. In the center space, we're going to place down a Daylight Detector, which will be turned to Night Mode. And we want to go then place down a Dark Oak Defense Key here in the center. And actually, sorry, rather a redstone repeater in the center, like so. We're gonna go then place down a stone brick stair to both sides, like so, and then a end rod coming off the front of the stair. After that, we want to go then place down a dark oak fence gate here in the center, open it toward the front, and then a wither skeleton skull on top of that fence gate, like so. With that done, we're gonna then place down an oakwood pressure plate on top of those two blocks there, a stone brick stair on top of these two walls. After those two stairs there, in the space in between them, we're going to place down a inside wall. And then one inside wall back. We then want to place down a oakwood pressure plate to both sides of this inside wall. Then at this point, we're going to place down a redstone repeater like so. A nurse stone brick stair to both sides like so. And then a end rod coming off those stone brick stairs like so. After that, we're going to then place down a inside wall here in the center. Followed by an oakwood pressure plate to both sides. We're going to then place down a stone... Uh, stone full block here in the center and then to the sides we're going to place down a stone upside down stair continuing to go back we're going to place down two redstone repeaters facing this direction two oakwood planks to the sides there of those repeaters and after that we're going to go then place down a stone brick uh, stair on top of that uh, gray concrete block and then an end rod like this going back and then an end rod on top of this glass pane and on top of that end rod, we're also going to place down an iron bar, like so. Now, once we get to this point, if you are on Java, we'll go ahead and grab our debug stick here. Um, some block uh, that we can go ahead and use that you can tell apart from the build. So, we'll just go ahead and grab ourselves a concrete block, brightly colored. Doesn't really matter. Yellow will do for um, what we're doing here. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to this section here. So, on the left side, we're going to build two blocks, like so. So, kind of a space of one between us and these two walls here. And then we're going to do the same thing, kind of coming off those glass panes, like so. So over two blocks like that, coming off those glass panes. Now we can go and then place down our levers here on the sides of these blocks. And then we can go and then grab our debug stick, use our debug stick, and we're going to left click the lever by crouching. Or actually, I think you just play, touch it without crouching. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and basically do it until we get selected facing. And it should give you a direction. By going ahead and crouching and right clicking, we can actually go ahead and alter the properties of the lever to go ahead and connect it up to the glass pane on the opposite side of this. So you'll just have to right click, some of you guys may have to right click less than I do, uh, depending on the orientation of your ship, but basically you're going to do this to both sides, and you'll have your levers that look just like that, and you do want them facing upwards. So again, same thing will be done on both sides here for the ship. And it's a pretty simple little process, a nice little extra detail feature again for our uh, Java viewers. And if you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I don't really have a good alternative for you. You can use fence gates, they're a little bulky. Um, preferably though, levers really are the best way to go when it comes to this situation. But um, again, the option for, um, for the fence gates could be implied as well, or you can find some kind of workaround for it. Uh, but anyways, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number 3, and with that we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number 4. Moving into our next layer, we have layer 4. For layer 4 to get started with, you're going to place down a stone brick stair on top of this cyan uh, terracotta block, followed by an end rod coming off it going forward. On top of this glass pane, we're going to place down an end rod as well, and then a iron bar on top of that end rod. We then want to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater, like so on top of this block here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair on top of that and side wall, with a skeleton skull to both sides of that skeleton skull. We're going to go then place down a dark oak fence on the back of the stair, open it up toward the stair, and then a iron trap door to both sides. If you're on Java, we can also go ahead and place down an iron frame on the side here of this iron trap door to kind of squeeze in um, that siding there. 
if you're on uh, Bedrock or Park Edition, you will not be able to do that, and it's really not that big of a deal um, in terms of with the overall design. After this fence gate, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a fence gate. We're going to place down a fence gate here, open up toward this wall, then a fence gate here, open up toward the back, another andesite wall, and another fence gate here, open toward the front, and then another fence gate here, open to the back, followed by again an andesite wall on top of that block there. Now once we get to this point, to the sides, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a gray bed uh, on top of this stair here, to both sides, and a gray bed on top of this stair, as well as a gray bed on top of these two walls here, to both sides. We're going to go then grab ourselves polished black stone stairs, slabs, and uh, dark oak signs. We're going to place down a slab and a stair like this on the side here, and a slab and a stair like so. We're going to place down dark oak signs on the sides of the slab and stair, again for these boats on the side of the ship. Now once we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and take our end rods. We're going to place down a end rod on top of these levers, and also on top of these end rods here for the front guns, and then also just end rods on these two levers right there. So same thing here. Just like that. And with that all done, uh, that right there is that section, and then we'll go ahead and continue to work our way toward the back here. We're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall, which will be on top of this block here. Then going off the inside wall, we're going to place down a barrier block. So a barrier block coming off the inside wall to both sides, and then a stone button. And actually, my bad, this is supposed to be scooted back one, so it's actually going to be on top of this second wall. So right there. And then now we're going to place down our barrier blocks to both sides, and stone buttons on the side there of the barrier blocks like so. And the space in between here, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, just like that. And then on top of those stairs there, we're going to place down a iron trap door to both sides. At this point, we're going to then place down a skeleton skull that will be on top of this wall here. And then grabbing levers again, we're going to place down a lever here on top of the stone block like so, and then a lever like that facing out to the sides there on the two stairs. And without all complete, that right there is going to conclude what we have for layer number uh, four. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number five. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to begin with by placing down a light gray stained glass pane on top of this stair right here. And then going back from the glass pane, we're going to place down a stone full block, followed by a skeleton skull on both sides of the stone full block. In addition, going to the front here, we're going to go and grab ourselves a barrier block. We're going to place down a barrier block coming off this end rod. And then to the sides of that barrier block, we're going to place down a stone button to both sides. So, one and two. Then we want to go up from the barrier block, up and back, one. And we're going to place down a barrier block right here. We'll wait for the air ones to dissipate. And you want this barrier block like so. And then we're going to place down a stone button on the side facing toward the front. So just like that for that front section there. At this point here, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, andesite wall on top of this right here. If you have a debug stick and you're on Java, we can go ahead and alter the properties of this by going ahead and lowering the wall on this side that connects up to that stone block. So it kind of makes it look a little bit more separate. We're going to place down a dark oak fence gate on top of this right here. And then we want to go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull. That would be on top of this uh, right here. After that, we're going to place down a an, or an inside wall. We're going to place down a wither skeleton skull again. And our dark oak fence gate open up toward the back like so. And then a inside wall coming off that fence gate like that. After we have that done, on the back here, we're going to also place down a uh, birchwood fence post coming up from this block here. To the sides of this, we want to go and place down a uh, barrier block and then a stone button and over here same thing a barrier block and a stone button like that to both sides and also on this barrier block we're going to place down one button on the back there like so we're going to go then place down a iron trap door kind of off this birchwood fence post we're going to grab an item frame place it down on the side of the trap door as well as a snowball in the item frame like that and after we have uh, that all done right there that is going to pretty much do it for that um, yeah, that right there is pretty much, uh, it when it comes to that. Uh, there's a barrier block that comes off this, um, inside wall there, so we can go and throw that on as well. Uh, though unfortunately we really don't have anything on it, just due to, uh, basically what we're going to do next. Now at this point right here, um, again, if you are on Java, we're going to be going ahead and doing another technique here using our debug stick. That's a little bit time more time consuming. Uh, but again, kind of part of the structure here for the lifeboat systems. Um. But basically what we're going to do here is we're going to be going ahead and 
starting off by going ahead and placing down a row of one, two, three, four blocks across those end rods here. And the same thing will be done on top of these two. We're going to place down levers here on the sides of these blocks. Just like this toward the inside here. And then taking our debug stick, we're going to uh, basically left click them. So we have selected face wall. We want to right click this until we get floor. And we're going to go ahead and set these all to the floor. So just like that and they'll be on top of the bed. We're going to go ahead and build a row out to the side here. One more. Delete our inner row like so. And we're going to then place down another row of levers like this across. This row we're going to do the same exact thing. So uh, we're going to do selected facing. Uh, sorry, face. And we're going to right click these so that they are basically connected to the floor. However, uh, we want the levers to face this way. So we'll go ahead and rotate the levers by going ahead and selected facing. And we're going to basically right click until we have it so that the levers face toward our levers on top of the beds. And once you have this done, that'll basically be your levers there for those lifeboats and creating that kind of system there, uh, pulley system and all that stuff for that. Um, anyways, though, that right there is going to basically conclude what we have there for uh, layer number five. And at this point, we'll be going ahead and moving into our final layers of our build to go ahead and complete the tutorial. All right, guys, so for our final layers here, we have layers six through 11. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to grab ourselves some birchwood fence posts. We're going to place down two fence posts on top of this stone block here. On top of the last fence post, we're going to grab a end rod and we're going to place down an end rod to both sides of that top fence post, just like that. After that, we want to go ahead and place down a andesite wall on top of this fence post like that. And um, go ahead and place down two end rods up and then a iron bar on top of that last end rod. After we have that done, we're going to then grab ourselves an iron trap door. We're going to place it down on top of uh, this birchwood fence post, so the second one there. We're going to then place down the item frame that will be coming off of it. Like so. And then in the item frame, we're going to place down a snowball. Like so. If you don't break it like I just did. Then we grab a new item frame. So an item frame there. And then a snowball in the item frame. Like that for that spotlight. At this point, grabbing ourselves barrier blocks. We're going to go up from this barrier block like so. We want to go and then go up and back one. Then it's going to go up two. Like that. And then we're going to go ahead and go up and back one again. And you have one right there. We're going to then take our stone buttons. We're going to place down stone buttons on the sides of this barrier block here. Stone button on this side here facing toward the front. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, stone button on both sides of this barrier block. And then a stone button on both sides of this one as well. Like that going up. Um, with that all done, we will go ahead and continue to work our way back. We're going to place down the inside wall on top of this one right here. As well as a polished black stone wall. We also want to go ahead and place down a uh, barrier block that will be basically coming down from this end rod. So kind of coming off that birchwood fence gate there. And we're going to place down stone buns on the two sides of the barrier block like so. After that we're going to go ahead and place down an inside wall on top of this. Polished black stone wall. Inside wall here. Polished black stone wall. Like that to go ahead and make those funnels. For the rear here we're going to go to this birchwood fence uh, post here. We're going to place down two more fence posts up. Uh, coming off this... Uh, fence post here, we're going to place down an end rod toward the back, and then we're going to go, ahead and go up and at an angle and place down a second end rod like so. We then want to go ahead and uh, place down an end rod uh, that will be on both sides of this fence post here as well. So just like that. And then an the side wall on top of that. We're going to go then place down two end rods up, and then a iron bar on top of that end rod like that. We're going to go then place down a row of barrier blocks coming off that end rod going forward. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some stone buttons and place down stone buttons here all along the side of those barrier blocks like this. And same thing up here all the way like this going forward. At this point here we're also going to go ahead and go to this um, section here. We're going to place down a end rod that will be coming off this one on both sides here on the top. And once we have that done uh, we want to go ahead and then take our barrier blocks and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of barrier blocks going from that end rod or from that center there all the way back to our rear mast like so and same thing we did before we're just going to place down a row of stone buttons all the way along the side there are those barrier blocks again same thing over here just like that after that the last thing we're going to do here is grab our barrier blocks we're going to go, ahead and go up from this one up and back at an angle so again up and back like so up and back like that so it connects up to that and side wall there and we're just going to place down stone buns on both sides of those barrier blocks like so 
And unfortunately, we can't place down a stone button on the side of this barrier block right here. We just kind of have it there for reference, I guess. And with that all complete, that right there is going to conclude my tutorial here for the um, Aurora uh, Pilata class uh, protected cruiser. Hopefully you guys do enjoy this design and are able to put it to good use. If you do end up using this design, I do ask you guys to give me proper credit for this being anything from the side of the build to to my channel or this video if this does appear on any social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for a project you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, all that fun stuff. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been your 204 and I'll see you guys next time.